Wahlkrieg, ich weiß mal, was sagt sich für Professor Wegmann, Professor Sigmund und Professor Kauf, auch Handwerke in den USA auch schon nicht. I will talk about the uh, fashion cooperation and uh, home fit action in the, the, the title of this page. Uh, this talk uh, consists of two parts. Part one, I will talk about the relationship between fashion and cooperation, and uh, part two, uh, that between fashion and home fit. Uh, this talk is uh, based on John Burke's with Hao Yu, Chen Zhong, Xin Long, Ning Ning, Xiao Guang, and Boy Yu. Several of the, of the most uh, technical and beautiful results were actually done by Boyi. So, if you were, uh, if you have really uh, tough and technical questions, I think that Boyi can help me answer them. <laughs> okay. Here are several uh, basic facts about fashion. First of all, fashion is a very huge industry. Uh, its global market size is estimated at around several uh, hundred billion US dollars every year. And not surprisingly, it provides many job opportunities, especially for countries like Italy and France. So uh, uh, the impact of fashion on the economy is uh, really huge. And it also has a very close relation with the environment, but mainly on the negative side. Because up to today, uh, fashion uh, is really not that uh, environmentally friendly. Uh, it creates this quite a lot of unnecessary bits. This is hand-in-hand uh, uh, hand with the surrender way pouch. But the, the impact of fashion uh, goes far beyond the economy and the environment. Uh, in fields like education, politics, arts, and even charitable donations and academics, fashion plays a quite an role. role. Uh, in fact, as claimed by Lars Vaden, Fashion has been one of the most influential phenomena in Western civilization since the, uh, since the Renaissance. It has conquered an increasing number of modernized fields of activity and has become almost second nature to us. Uh, he claims that uh, fashion deserves serious studies from even philosophers. So what is fashion? Uh, very interestingly, uh, there are two opinions. They are both extremely popular, but almost opposite to each other. For instance, when we say that, wow, Lady Gaga is goddess of fashion. Here, fashion uh, means a kind of rebellion behavior, a kind of very strange behavior. But when we say that this year's fashion color is black, here, fashion refers to a kind of conforming behavior. Of course, this observation is not new. Uh, it can be traced back at least to now more than a century ago. And uh, this observation is echoed in the definitions of fashion, uh, very perfect. Uh, one definition of fashion says that it is a distinctive or peculiar and often happy manner of way. And the other definition is that it is a prevailing custom usage of style. Uh, this model first. The model we use, first proposed by uh, Professor Jackson in his famous book, uh, is based on the above observation about people's uh, different opinions on fashion. It is a networking model. The input is just uh, an undirected graph where each node represents a, a, a player or an agent. And each player has two actions to choose, either zero or one. And agents are classified into two types, uh, either a conformist or a rebel. A conformist likes neighbors with the same actions, uh, but dislikes those with the different actions. And the preference of a rebel is the opposite. Uh, she likes neighbors of the different actions, but dislikes those of the same actions. Uh, and in, in this model, the payoff each agent is simply set as uh, the number of liked neighbors minus that of disliked ones. Uh, we see that an agent is satisfied when his PO is non-negative. So uh, a Nash equilibrium is simply an action profile where all agents are satisfied. 
Uh, one beauty of this model is that it keeps the elementary matching hands here as a special case. In fact, we can see that the row player is a conformist and the column player is a rabbit. If we uh, uh, and we use a circle to uh, represent the conformist and a triangle uh, for a rebel, then this special diag with one circle and one uh, one triangle is exactly the matching panel scale. It not only the matching panel scale, but also two other elementary games. The, the coordination game and the anti-coordination game are also uh, both special cases of the fashion game. For, uh, because for two, if the whole network consists of only two conformists, then uh, this is exactly uh, this uh, pure coordination game. And if the uh, network consists of only two rebels, then this is exactly the, the anti-coordination game. So there are a total of three base games in uh, the fashion game. In fact, we can prove uh, easily that the fashion game can be decomposed exactly into these three types of base games. Uh, here are several facts about this model. It is a po two population game. That is, the interactions are not only between uh, the conformance and rebels, but also happening within conformance and within rebels. And a mixed Nash equilibrium is guaranteed because we can simply let each player play half zero and half one. But unfortunately, pure Nash equilibrium is not guaranteed. Just think about the Nash game. And, and the computational problem of deciding whether pure Nash equilibrium exists for a given network is in general very hard. So this seemingly a uh, simple model is actually not that easy. And another beauty of this model is that it models uh, pure cooperation and pure competition simultaneously. Why? Because in the three base games, uh, the co coordination game and the anti-coordination game, they are both common interest games. There are no conflicts uh, between the players' interests. So this is pure cooperation. But for the matching panic scheme, because it is a zero sum, so there is no possibility for cooperation. And thus it is a pure cooperation, a pure computation. And so uh, this model uh, combines the two eternal topics of game theory perfectly. And we can also see that uh, it is a hybrid of the majority game and the minority game. <coughs> Uh, the main question we try to answer in the first part, in the first part of the talk is that in a world where each agent is fashionable, selfish, extremely naive and myopic, and has very little or has very limited information to what is tend to to what is turned can operation be reached through social interactions. Uh, here fashionable means that they are uh, either uh, conformist or rival and selfish uh, refers to that uh, each player cares only uh, the welfare of her own. Naive means that each player has only uh, one step memory and does not look forward. Uh, limited information means that uh, every player knows only the information of herself and her neighbors. Uh, since we have mentioned that uh, this model combines uh, both pure cooperation and pure comp competition. So this question is uh, very natural, I think. And our answer is quite convincing. We find that uh, a rather high level of cooperation can be, uh, can be obtained. And the updating rule we use is a stochastic, stochastic best response dynamic. There's an updating probability uh, P. That is, in each round of this game, every unsatisfied agent 
has a probability p to uh, update. And uh, this allows us to compare the cases of synchronous updating, synchronous updating and all the middle cases because if p is wide, then it is synchronous updating. When p is very tiny, then in each one, at, at most one pair updates. So that is the synchronous up updating. To measure uh, operation level, we take three very natural indices, uh, corporation degree, average satisfaction degree, and equilibrium ratio. Uh, corporation degree is, is a percentage of satisfied agents. So when this, when this index is one, a pure natural equilibrium uh, is reached. For each player, we define her satisfaction degree as the number of liked agents. Uh, the number of liked Neighbors divided by the total number of uh, total number of neighbors, and the equilibrium ratio is the percentage of uh, of simulations where pure natural equilibrium is reached. Here is the main uh, uh, simulation results. From this simulation, we can observe that uh, a rather high cooperation degree and average satis satisfaction degree can be reached. The, uh, the average values in our simulation are respectively 0.8 and 0.6. And with a probability of 0.45, a pure natural equilibrium can be obtained. Uh, these results are uh, changed on uh, small, world small world networks. Uh, if we use cellular automation networks, then the, the three values are even much, much higher. And the convergence is remarkably fast. Uh, and the effects of rebels and updating probability is also very uh, clear. Uh, it turns out that high updating probability P is always bad for corporate cooperation. This is intuitive because when there are many players updated at the same time, then uh, it is hard for them to, to coordinate. And, and the high rebel ratio is uh, also bad when P is large. But when P is small, the effect of rebel ratio is roughly achieved to B. And uh, low position level occurs only when uh, the two parameters are both high. Also, the structure factors, factors the randomness and the density of the uh, of the networks, their effects are also very clear. We can also observe some uh, phase transition phenomenon uh, of the equilibrium ratio in updating probability. When the, uh, when the updating probability is, uh, is less than point, point 0.8, then uh, with probability 1, the pure natural equilibrium will be reached. But uh, as long as, as it takes Sees uh, point uh, eight seven, the probability uh, drops sharply uh, to zero. Also, some uh, very beautiful uh, patterns uh, can emerge. For instance, uh, the mazes. Okay, that is the, the first part of uh, my talk. The, in the second part of my talk. Uh, I will discuss fashion cycle. By fashion cycle, I mean a phenomenon uh, that some product or behavior uh, that is uh, very fashionable for some time, but uh, after, after some time it will disappear. And, and after uh, some further time, it may come back again. Any notable evidences about fashion cycle, for instance, uh, fashion color and length of girls' skirts are, are numerous. And this is a phenomenon that is very similar to uh, economic cycle. And also, they may be very, uh, sometimes they may be uh, closely related. For instance, it's well known that when the economic development is uh, not very good, uh, girls' skirts are usually very short. And, but a theoretical uh, study on this problem is uh, quite likely. 
and we can draw some uh, interesting comparisons between technology and fashion. And as argued by some scholars, fashion is a rather uh, important rule in producing the total value of products. Uh, and the, the rule is only second to technology. But, but the evolution of technology is uh, fairly simple. It keeps advancing. But for fashion, we observe the opposite. There is no arrow for the, for the development of fashion. And as to the causes of fashion cycle, we can argue simply that fashion cycle is caused ultimately by a combined force of consumers and producers. And previous literature, uh, mainly in the economics, uh, is, uh, is mainly on the produ du producer side. Our approach is completely from the uh, consumer side. We shall study how the social interaction structures affect the evolution of uh, fashion. <coughs> As Smell observed that heterogeneity is critical to the existence of fashion cycle. Uh, he wrote that two social tendencies are <coughs> essential to the establishment of fashion, namely the need of union on the one hand and the need of isolation on the, on the other. So why should this be absent, fashion will not be formed. Very interestingly, I use this model, this uh, smells insightful claim can be uh, rigorously proved very easily because in this model, when all agents are conformists, it is a potential game. And when all agents are rebels, it is also a potential game. So uh, if we use, if we use uh, the, the, the natural as response dynamic, then a pure natural pedigree will uh, be surely obtained. And there is no possibility for the existence of a uh, fashion cycle. Um, our main, main finding is that uh, the emergence of fashion cycle is closely related uh, with uh, a clean index of the network's homophilic. Homophilic is uh, simply the summary of the daily observation that birds of a feather flock together, and there have been numerous evidences support, supporting its a universal existence, and uh, it really has a quite significant impact on people's behavior. <coughs> so this is our uh, our main conclusion. Homophilia in general inhibits the emergence of fashion cycle. So how do we get this? The main trick is that we transform the stochastic best response dynamic to a system of ODE. Here X is a percentage of rebels that take action one, and Y is a percentage of, uh, oh, sorry, X is a percentage of conformance taking action one, and Y is a percentage of rebels taking action one, and V, Y, V, two, R, one, R, two, R, V, C, Y, V, C, two, V, R, Y, V, R, two, R, linear functions of uh, uh, x and y, uh, but phi is not necessarily linear. All we require is that it is uh, non-negative, uh, non-decreasing, and uh, differential. <coughs> Fortunately, uh, the key techniques are pair and diffusing cross emissions is called by chosen etc. And fortunately, this ODE can be uh, uh, can be completely, rather completely understood. Uh, we can calculate all the fixed points and analyze their stabilities. And uh, also, we can analyze its global behavior. Uh, the main results are that, uh, first, if periodic solutions of the ODE emerges, then each, the homophilic index is more than 45, and each C, the 
a conformist homophily index is greater than uh, that of the rebel of the rebel homophily index. And part two, if uh, if the homophily index is uh, greater than 0.5, then almost all trajectories of OVE converge to boundary uh, fixed points. So uh, under the condition in the uh, second part of this theorem, fashion set, uh, periodic, periodic solutions is not possible. So if we take periodic solutions uh, roughly equivalent as fashion cycle, then uh, this theorem tells us that uh, uh, homophilic in general inhibits the emergence of fashion cycle. And we can also uh, restate this, uh, reformulate this result in terms of the numbers of the different types of uh, edges. If fashion cycle emerges, then we know that uh, KCR, the, the number of conformist rebel edges is greater than that of conformist conformist uh, edges plus rebel rebel edges. And, uh, and the number of conformist, conformist edges is greater than that of uh, rebel rebel edges. And the second part is that uh, if uh, KCC is smaller than KC, uh, or KCR is smaller than KCC plus KRR, then fashion cycle is <coughs> This result is also intuitive uh, because uh, uh, it tells us, us that the emergence of fashion cycles uh, relies on two conditions. First, plenty of CR edges uh, because uh, these edges uh, tend to uh, lead the system to oscillations and uh, uh, second, plenty of CC edges. Uh, these edges tend to push the oscillation away from the interior of this point. Uh, since our results are obtained uh, through a approximation technique, it is natural to ask how reliable are uh, how reliable is this approximation? Uh, we did some uh, simulations and it turns out that this approximation is quite reliable. The, the left parts are predicted by our uh, approximation, by our approximation, and the uh, right parts are uh, simulations. We can see that they are perfectly matched. And we also need some uh, error analysis. It also turns out that the errors are generally very small. <coughs> okay, to end my talk, I want to see more about uh, this model. All, of, all I have talked about fashion, formulas, rebels. We can think of uh, many similar pairs. So, uh, hopefully, uh, our model and the results might have some uh, universal implications. Uh, these pairs include uh, reproduction and mutation in biology, obedience and uh, rebellion in psychology, uh, imitation and innovation in learning, leaders and followers in classic behavior and positive negative feedbacks in control theory and strategic complements and strategic substitutes in uh, game theory. This is all. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and, uh, okay, I have uh, questions about in your first uh, part of your talk. So you show the phase transitions. I found there exist some fluctuations. Can you explain why? And uh, second question. And, uh, Sorry. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are exist some fluctuations. Fluctuations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why? Why what happened? And uh, what kind of phase transition is a uh, Uh, first question is, uh, there exist some fluctuations. Uh, yes, yes, can you explain why? And uh, this is a 
continuous phase translation or distinguished? Distinguished. Uh, dis okay. the, the, the time is discrete. Yes. But uh, what about uh, but there is this fluctuation? What happened on that part? I mean, between 0.8 and 0.85? Uh, it's a technical question. Uh, honestly, for this question, I have no, no idea what to think about this. Mm -hmm. And the second question, you, mean, you mentioned that the heterogeneity is very critical to the fashion yeah. circle. Yeah. So what do you mean the heterogeneity is, means the network's properties or the population heterogeneity means that like there are both bodies rather. If we have only one type of uh, mm -hmm. agents, then fashion cycle is not, not possible. That is the, the claim of that. Okay, okay. Do, uh, do you use the uh, I mean a quality to define the heterogeneities? Or a parameter to define no, or no parameter. Just or okay, okay, I see. Yes. Maybe I could add some comments. So at first, Trigon is too modest. In fact, he did most of the simulations and the equilibrium analysis. So I only did the dynamic part. So the second is that our method works for it's in fact a biometric game on the social network. You know that most of the works are symmetric game on social network, and our technology works for any biometric game on social networks. So this is our contribution. Okay. okay thank you for your talk again. Yes. Oh, sorry. If we still have a second, you showed us an approximation that happened to be well corroborated by your individual-based simulations. Would you like to tell us a bit more about? What technique you used and when the approximation was good? You mean this? Yes. Okay, wait. <laughs> so maybe first I can explain the updating process. So we use the best response dynamics. So in each time step we send to one individual to check whether he's satisfied with his current state. And if he's not satisfied, then we he can change his strategy. So this updating process. So this maybe means strong selection. We don't need weak selection. So the second part, we consider a very large population size. So this allows us to use the diffusion approximation. Maybe also be familiar with that. Okay. So based on these conditions and the second conditions, then we need one more parameter, which is age. If you can show that. Could you show that page? Age. Uh, age. Uh, it's a table to show the stability. Uh, next page. Uh, no. This one? Uh, yeah, this one. So, you can make this larger. So, we have H. So, H in fact is a stochastic parameter. So, for a given network, we can calculate H. For instance, the simplest network, for instance, only if we have a network, and for instance, if you are a conformist, and the rebel, this means H equals to zero, no homophilic. And if you have the same type in the homophilic, then H equals to one. So for any given social network, we can calculate this age. And our prediction is that for any given social network, if we can calculate the age, then we can predict whether this can emerge back in cycles. So this is our, so this is our assumptions and the technologies. Thank you, Dr. Okay. And uh, this will